can be agreed to, and I call the member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to rise to pay tribute to the late the Honourable Sir John Carrick, AC, KCMG. I say this, these remarks having not ever met Mr Carrick and not knowing him personally, but nonetheless knowing him by reputation and his contribution not just to our great party, the Liberal Party, the movement and the cause of liberalism in Australia, but of course also his, through his service to our great nation. Of course, as many others will have remarked, Mr. Carrick was, Sir Carrick was elected to the Senate in, the, in 1970 and through, served through to his retirement in 1987. During that time, he had a long and illustrious political career and ministerial career, including rising to the level of Minister for Housing and Construction, Minister for Urban and Regional Development, the Minister for Education, and the Minister assisting the Prime Minister on Federal Affairs, National Development and Energy. But the interest I have in uh, Sir Carrick isn't just in his uh, roles in his professional capacity, but the values and the philosophy that sits at the heart of his liberalism. Liberalism is, of course, the greatest political philosophy that the world has ever known. It is the one that has endured every type of ism and extremism that has ever reared its head in competition. And over time, through the process of understanding of the human condition and our aspiration, it has endured against, against incredible difficulties at times. And what Sir John Carrick did was represented the best of that tradition. He understood the foundations of liberalism was to aspire to a society where people were free to choose their life and their circumstances, to be able to change their circumstances if they found them undesirable and to pursue the free choice that they wanted about how they wanted to live their lives, understanding the primacy not just of the rights of the individual, but also, importantly, of the foundational building block of our country, which is the family, towards community and ultimately nationhood. But critically, Sir John Carrick also understood something else. He understood the foundation of liberalism was also anchored in a sense of justice. A sense of justice, not just of respect towards the individual, but our collective bond and sharing responsibility to each other. In recognising on so many occasions the importance of a sense of national unity, particularly around rejecting a lot of sectarian elements that exist within, existed within Australian society at the time. And that was no better demonstrated, of course, than his advocacy, his public funding for faith-based schools, and particularly the Catholic school system. Recognising that no matter who you were, if you wanted to live and enliven life in freedom and choice, that you had to have choice about where you went to school and equally where you sought to have your children go to school. In his first speech, I looked, uh, in his first speech, he made remarks along these lines that, quote, I do not stand for any section of the community. The people I represent are not measured by size of my, their pay packet, by colour or shirt collar, or by the nature of their religious devotion. Divisiveness is the evil of politics, and I hope to do something to reduce it. And throughout Sir John Carrick's political career, he did just that by focusing on that sense of unity and purpose, of national identity and of freedom and of choice. He was, of course, a man of his times. And sometimes when you go back and read his history and some of his contributions, my eyebrows did raise, particularly his advocacy for the virtues of the Conciliation Arbitration Commission. But as I said, he was a man of his times. Critically, though, he was a man who understood that at the heart of any successful political career and at the heart of the pursuit of what the Liberal Party should stand for, stand for, it was anchored in values and philosophy, for which he wrote extensively about, particularly uh, uh, for the public in various contributions. And it struck me in David Clune's review of a more recent book titled Carrick Principles, Politics and Polity. Clune wrote of Carrick, that his definition of liberal philosophy placed much emphasis on the potential of the individual, but it rejected both laissez-faire and collectivism as threats of the development of individual dignity. He understood 
that the Liberal Party must be a party for every Australian. And more than anything else, when you read through his history and his contribution to public life, Carrick represented the foundations of great liberal philosophy and then sought to put it into practice. He understood that the foundations of liberalism is a cultural and institutional conservatism. In fact, I found an article from 1973 where he was arguing that in the choice of a new national anthem, uh, that God Save the Queen should at least be part of the selection of choices. He understood the power of symbols and of the institutions that we have inherited and the importance of their role to continue on into the future. But critically, he also understand, understood the power of economic and social liberalism to chart a course for the future of the country. He understood that the future of this country was not bound solely by its past, but that there are alternative choices about whether we seek to be a liberal, liberal democracy or a social democracy. And that the Liberal Party and its values are in live best when we extol the virtues of liberalism and a forward-looking vision for our country. And so to join it, to uh, quote his first speech again in his closing remarks, I have one great hope. I believe in the, vi the vision of the future to meet the challenges of the future. The great solutions and the great motivations not being created by economic instruments will be created by a new philosophy of education. In rethinking our education research and studying as our main subject, not material science, but man, we will come some way towards the solutions. It is high time man was less preoccupied with material science and more preoccupied with the only study that matters, man. Which is to say that we should always have a vision of how we can shape the future. May he rest in peace.